sports fans, we are coming to you live from downtown Toronto at the corner of Young and Wellesley. It is 401 Games, and it is X-Wing time. We are your hosts. I'm Timbo Slice. Hello, folks, and I am Throwdown Horton. Thanks for joining us on a Sunday afternoon. We know that uh, many folks may have been tuning in to our friends across the, the pond who were doing their national championships in uh, Madrid, Spain this weekend. So if you're coming to us live after watching that, we thank you. And, uh, and congratulations to uh, all the players that placed very well. Understand that um, apparently the, uh, the championships had a little bit less of a turnout than they were expecting because it was one of the first nationals in Europe that was part of a, a giant gaming convention. So as a result, the cost of the ticket actually doubled. And for some folks, it was um, a little bit too uh, restrictive. But they still had, I think, uh, I remember hearing well over uh, 100 players, close to 200, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. And uh, it looks like a Rebel list came out on top. We'll talk about that today. But we're going to be bringing you uh, live coverage, uh, streamed coverage of three, uh, four rounds of a GNK um, from 401 here today. So despite it being a bit of a casual event, uh, Aaron, I think it's, it's safe to say that there are not many casual lists here this afternoon, are there? No, nor are these casual players. These are some of the best players in the GTA that just happened to turn up on this Sunday. So this is going to be a bloodbath, uh, a full-on blood sport uh, afternoon here today. And for your pleasure, in the first round, we have two related players. Do we not, Tim? I'm really excited to bring this coverage to, uh, to VTV Live. I mean, Travis and, and Victor have been phenomenal at helping not just um, the, uh, the gaming community stores in the GTA get publicity for their locations, but also for helping uh, us and the other members of our Prototype Toronto League get some publicity on it. Um, for them to be able to actually give us the opportunity to stream uh, a father and son, uh, you know, Darth versus Luke, Anakin versus Obi-Wan, however you want to say it. It's great to see uh, a father and son uh, playing together and sharing uh, the love of uh, a tabletop strategy game because ultimately, you know, it's better than... Um, Better than just melting your brain away playing, you know, The Last of Us or some other mindless video game on the internet, right? So, yeah, Scott and Sam Ross coming out to us from London, Ontario. Um, they've been playing as a dynamic duo in tournaments for, for quite some time now. And I speak to Scott every now and again. Him and his son have been all over Ontario. I went to a Sarnia store championship with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that Scott always says that Sam, even though he's younger, is actually the one who places top eight more consistently than Scott. That often, of course, has a little bit, because Scott will usually rock up to a, a store championship with, uh, you know, two X-Wings, two Y-Wings, and a B-Wing or something something janky like that. Yeah. It looks like he and his son both brought their A-game today, though, Aaron. Awesome. Uh, so on the left-hand side, we have Scott. Uh, that's the father, Ross. He's got... Uh, Poe with Intensity, BB-8, Prime Thrusters, Integrated Astromech, and Black One. So that's a fairly standard BB-8 build. The Prime Thrusters is going to help him if he has any problems with stress, um, get out of tight corners. And he's got Han Solo with Trick Shot, Chewie, R2-D2, Engine Upgrade, and the Millennium Falcon title. So apart from Trick Shot, that's a fairly standard Han build as well. Nice fat Han. But uh, these rocks have been arranged in such a way that he should have lots of opportunities to shoot at his son's Caraxes through those rocks. Um, do you want to tell us about Sam's list? I'm absolutely just gaga over the moon about Sam's list. i got to tell you, Aaron. You have three pilots. Um, I mean, oh, we're going to switch sides here. Thank you very much for that, Travis. Just to make sure we do have our scum player on the left-hand side, folks, and our rebel player on the right-hand side. Um, so Sam has brought three Kirax fighters. Now, although Talonbane Cobra is from the original Kirax pack, mm -hmm. I think it's fair to say that since Guns for Hire launch, he's really redefined his identity as far as a piece in X-Wing. When, when you can consider about some of the um, upgrades that you can now put on him for next to no cost in some time, mm -hmm. right? Um, it looks like we already have 23 uh, viewers on our stream this morning, Aaron. So good morning to everybody. If anybody wants to uh, join in on the chat, we're going to keep a little bit of a two-way conversation going today as much as possible. Unless any of our American friends from Mandalore tuned in, then we're just going to ridicule them. 
So we're getting back to Sam's list. We've got Talonbane Cobra with expertise only costing three points, of course. All the upgrades reducing their cost by one point, thanks to that wonderful Vaxi title. Is that I'm pronouncing that right, Vaxi? I don't think anyone knows. It's no Star one knows? Wars, Fair enough. I mean, like Purex? Yeah. See, this is going to be a really tough match for Sam because he didn't bring Deadeye uh, Kiraxes. Yep. He brought Kiraxes that rely on target locks. Indeed. Because all of them have uh, some sort of munition, and it's all harpoon missiles. Yep. And Scott has the ability to shred two target locks at PS9 every turn. Um, I'm just going to double check. Travis, have we actually figured out who has initiative? So I think we'll that Sam, yeah, happens. Sam, we'll figure out in round one. It's fine, no problem. Uh, the person who has initiative deploys first. Great. So Sam has the initiative. It makes sense. I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, Scott has a bid, 59 and 39. That's yeah, one point bid, two point bid, but yeah, two point. Yeah, I mean, this, this is rough for Sam. Uh, the Falcon alone uh, will be able to do a lot of damage to those Kiraxes. Um, and then recharge. I mean, the, the thing is, is that, uh, you know, Sam has Sam has, Sam has three um, uh, Kirax fighters with just great loadouts. I'll go through their loadouts really quickly. So Talamane Cobra, of course, doubles his range bonuses as a pilot ability. He has expertise, harpoon missiles, uh, guidance chips, pulse gray shield, vector thrusters, and the backside title. Uh, the ion dischargers. Are we certain that those are ion dischargers and not scavenger cranes? Uh, I'll go check. It yeah, out. if you don't, yeah, we'll just double check. I mean, if it is, it's great. Wow, I love the ion dischargers. Coming in fast, with Victor and Justero. Victor and Hell. Victor Hell, of course, loaded with a stealth device, so he will not be rolling exactly two defense dice, which means that his pilot ability of giving a stress token to the attacker whenever he doesn't roll exactly two defense dice, um, will be a thing. Good morning, Eric. Uh, what's going on? We're, uh, we're having a GNK in Toronto this afternoon. Now, Justero uh, is actually one of my favorite new Kirax fighters because of how well he synergizes with an Asajj. Justero says that whenever, um, once per round, if an enemy ship in your firing arc at range 1 to 3 suffers damage from something other than an attack, so, for example, a bomb or the harpoon condition, or I hit a rock, or whatever, then you get to attack them as a bonus. So it, it's almost like Sam brought four ships in his list if he can find a way to trigger that just stereo ability. So he's got stress control, a bonus attack, and um, a PS9 Talon main with, uh, who's gonna be hitting like a truck at range one. At range one, yeah. Um, and you know, the fact that uh, Talon Bane, Victor Hell, and Justero all have the ability to recharge if they can get into a good lane position behind that Falcon yep. or, or what have you. Now, of course, Scott did bring engine upgrade on Han, which is going to allow him to get into some favorable positions. But yeah, I'm really interested to see how Sam's going to deal with the fact that Scott has the ability to shred so many target locks in this list there, Aaron. Yeah, indeed. Well, like you said, we've got the pulse ray shields, pulse ray shields on all three of the Kiraxes. With ion dischargers on each of them. So, um, what can happen here is Sam can go for regeneration with those pulse ray shields in the end phase and see if he can send damage onto uh, his opponents with the ion dischargers. We're going to look that card up for you in a minute. Right now, we can see that Han and Poe are declining the straight joust so far. Intensity is being flipped face down, face up, it's being reactivated. And okay, it's independent of what Han's doing. And Han is boosting out of range. You may be in range of Talon Bane, we'll see in a moment. They're about both eight. That's okay for Talon Bane. Talon Bane does get bonuses versus shots at range three, but he's out of range. Okay, intensity is being unexhausted. And intensity is being unexhausted. Um, Tim, 
Can we look up ion dischargers just to make sure we know how that works? Oh, I'm very familiar with how ion dischargers work, and I'm thrilled to report that they are indeed ion dischargers. Yes, they are. Um, okay. What we're going to do is make sure. So, <laughs> Scotch just put it away, Aaron. If you don't mind, would you just go ask him to keep the intensity card on the map for us? Sure. So down where his dice are, so that we can just keep track of what state the intensity is in. Yeah, just down in the corner there. Where? Yeah, where his red dice are would be perfect. Thank you. Yeah, it's a little bit of both, to tell you the truth, Eric. I've got a big booming voice, and, and Aaron was a little bit far away from the mic, so we'll try and balance it out as the day goes on. We got three matches to get our stuff right. So just to talk about Aaron's uh, point here, it is confirmed that all three of Sam's Kirax fighters are equipped with Ion Dischargers. Ion Discharger is a fantastic card that synergizes with Pulse Ray Shield. So let me explain. Um, Pulse Ray Shield says whenever you are at the end phase of a, of a turn, you may opt to take an Ion token uh, in order to regain a shield. You have to have, of course, a uh, shield value of one to equip this card, but that's the, that's the rub. Now, for only one point, of course, instead of two, because he's got backside title, he's basically taken four points of upgrades for two. The, the reason that the Ion Dischargers synergize really well with the Pulse Ray Shield is because Ion Discharger says, whenever you receive an Ion token, if you have an enemy ship within range one of you, two things happen. The first is that you simply just don't receive that Ion token. You have to imagine that the electricity is grounded and it just passes to the other ship. It is discharged, if you will. And then the second part that happens is that when that happens, the enemy ship in range one, the player has the option to say to you, okay, you know what, I don't like that card. I'm going to break your ion discharger, but I'm going to take that ion token. So for somebody like Poe to take an ion token is extremely hazardous because... He then would not reveal a maneuver dial the following turn, not trigger BB-8, and be in big trouble. Um, plus the maneuver's white, so he wouldn't get to use BB-8 even if he was. So for Sam, to have, um, for Sam to have ion dischargers and pulse ray shields on all three of these Kiraxes, he's opted for tankiness as opposed to putting like engine upgrade uh, vector thrusters on all three of them kind of thing and give them that kind of maneuverability, which I kind of respect because... Curex fighters, even though they can take upgrades for less money now, or for less points, I should say, mm -hmm. it feels like um, it, it just feels like they're not maneuverable enough as aces on the board still. Mm -hmm. Whereas they, you can give them these types of upgrades, like stealth device on Hector, uh, Victor Hell, for example, and um, and you know still be able to uh, tank. Like Victor Hell, this loadout on him is is nasty. He's got three agility yes. with a stealth device, right? He's taken the, the pulse ratio, and you see on Victor, I may have opted for a scavenger crane just so I could recover that stealth device and keep his pilot uh, ability going. But like here, for example, if Han shoots at Victor Hell, Han will take a stress token because it's range three and he's rolling four dice. So you, only, you don't only not hit him, but now you take a stress token for trying to hit him. Uh, I totally agree with you, uh, Iceman HG. His jank is, his, his jank is strong in this one. And I, what I love the most is that Sam has combined uh, a combination of a strong list with being lower PS than the other two ships. And he started really spread out, and he's really uh, cast a wide net. And as a result, he has, um, I feel like, covered a lot of the board. Now, it looks now, like... this is really interesting. Yeah. Scott has... So, uh, number three, uh, Kirax Justero, has taken a target lock on Han. Uh, but Scott did not use BBA with Poe, so he does not get the. He's not got. He wasn't in range to strip the target lock using Black One from Han. So Han is going to be eating those um, harpoon missiles unless he can get Han out of range here. Indeed, indeed. It looks like Sam has called Scott's move here with Jostero. Uh, it has a nice range one on Poe. Um, and and uh, it doesn't look like Poe has a return arc on him either. But here comes Han doing a hard two around that the asteroid. The color of the numbers and the list is reversed on screen. You get the, uh, the numbers and are Han's yellow pulled and the list in for a range two shot on Jostero. So a big question will be here. Does Poe have arc on Jostero or not? What action is Han going to do here? Is he going to boost? Is he going to token up? try to 
take as little damage as possible from that harpoon. Thank you for answering uh, Iceman HG's question there, uh, Tommy Adams. It's true. Because Poe is equipped with BB-8, he has the potential to strip up to two target locks per turn because he barrels with BB-8, uh, and then he can trigger intensity then if he likes uh, and shred one and then boost as an action, intensity, take a token. It's a great synergetic build for Poe. Uh, it's still not a cheap Poe. Um, so somebody on Sam's side That looks like Sam's initiative shot with... Uh, Hell on Poe. Oh, yeah. blank out. So... Spending the evade token he got with intensity there. So one damage into BB-8, Poe. One shield damage. Okay, that's not unrecoverable, too bad. but it's not the end of the world. Yeah, it's a lot of you know. There's a lot of talk back and forth about which is a more effective Poe build with the recharge or the the one who can, as a as a bonus to his squad, shred those target locks. I really think it's six app one dozen the other. I mean, based on the field that we have playing here today, mm -hmm. I think Scott's going to be well equipped with a BB-8 Poe because I think there's so many munitions bouncing around today that a uh, BB-8 Poe is going to come in very handy. I would agree. However, right now, his BB-8 Poe is not in a great position. They are measuring that arc with lasers and trying to determine what is the case. We need a judge call. I love it. The father and son giving themselves no leeway whatsoever. It is just a fight to the death here, folks. And we'll be soon and soon we will determine who in fact does have the high ground. <laughs> yeah, so Iceman HG uh, black one is once per turn. Uh, it means that your BB-8 barrel roll cuz intensity says that whenever you perform a boost or barrel roll action, you get a token. And BB-8, it's a black one says whenever you perform a boost or barrel roll, you can shred a target lock. There is no arc. There's no arc there. Oh, that was a close oh, one. No. <laughs> so uh, Scott overextended his Poe just he by a hair there. It would have been yeah. better. You think he would have been better on a bank boost there? The bank boost would have given him... Absolutely. I'd have given him range two from uh, from oh, Captain right, Justero, right. though. We got uh, Han being used in order to reroll those dice. Oh, Ooh, that's very so favorable hit. Two crits. Looks like so. Victor Hell spending his focus token, mm -hmm. taking a crit, and let's see if Sam remembers uh, Victor Hell's ability here. Yep, he did. Han is now stressed. Okay, I'm not really processing what these tokens are. These snazzy uh, sling paint tokens. Okay. Yeah. So right now, uh, Han has a stress token and a target lock from. Captain Justero, our red number three. Mm -hmm. And that's the exciting part that's going to happen now. Yeah. I, th I think that it's going to be interesting, you know, because uh, Talon Bane's way out of the fight here. Ooh, here comes the harpoons. Okay, we're going to get a harpoon missile and, shot and here. Absolutely true, Tim. Uh, Talon Bane is going to come in as a hitter in the end game here. Can we get three. I think you need to get a little closer to the mic there, buddy. Oh, sorry, man. Uh, and he's spending the lock, and it rains three. Were you and I are gonna be nice and cozy all day long, man? Indeed. Cuddles. Okay, so we got how many into Han? So the harpoon commit, the harpoon condition triggers. So Han is now harpooned. Um, for those of the folks who are watching who may not know, harpooned is a condition that is recent uh, in in the game. It came out in the um, the Guns for Hire pack that was just released uh, as the last one. Obviously, we're expecting a new wave uh, next week. But I think that the, ish. yeah, next week-ish. I mean, it's going to be really interesting, I think, because, you know, you take something like um, uh, a munition like that they introduced that's four points, and, you know, it, it doesn't um, it doesn't require uh, you to spend the target lock. I think that's the, the Sorry huge... Sorry yeah, go ahead. Uh, the pulse ray shield is being used by Victor Hell. Um, and he's just, he put the ion on the table and discarded it. So he used the ion discharger. The iron discharger. Am I mistaken in saying that's the first VWTV Live uh, capturing discharge. iron discharger? There awesome. you go. See, I mean, against a big base ship, ion discharger is not a great tool because the big base ship will just be like, you know, forget you, I'm mm -hmm. going to do it. And it uh, looks like Scott's opting to use R2-D2 crew on that. So he's going to recover a shield and roll a die. Right. Um, doesn't need to roll the die here because he doesn't have any damage cards. But R2-D2 crew 
is different from the R2-D2 Astromech in that at the end of the phase, you may uh, recover a shield, but you also need to roll a die, and if okay. you hit, get a hit or a crit, you have to turn one of your damage cards face up. Yeah, he has to be out of shields to use it. He, he tried to use it without that condition, uh, without that trigger uh, being there correctly, and his son, Sam, just called him on it, so the, the regen didn't happen. <laughs> Nothing like having your dad try to cheat in the game because he's yeah, afraid you're going to yeah, beat him, right? Yeah, your, your dad <laughs> cheating on you on stream. <laughs> Shame. I don't know about you, Aaron, but I mean, like both you, both you and I. I mean, I don't know how how well you get along with your dad when you guys were younger, but um, like when I was a kid, I used to play chess with my dad all the time, and he never let me win. We've talked about this. We were both uh, dominated by our fathers at chess when we were young, and here we are, years later, playing X Wing in competitive venues. What's that about? I think it just has a lot to do with the type of games you like to expose. I said, you know, when I worked at EB Games when I was a younger man, and I, I said it to parents all the time. If you can get your kid playing Legend of Zelda compared to like Call of Duty, it's going to be better for them because it's a, it teaches creative thinking and problem for solving sure. and that for kind sure. of thing, right? Um, just to clarify for everybody, uh, in case anybody doesn't realize, the harpoon condition, when you are hit by an attack, which Han was, and there is at least one uncanceled crit result from now on, each other ship at range one suffers a damage. So anybody who puts a through, uh, crit through on Han triggers harpoon now. Um, and then... As well, Han would receive a face-down damage card. Uh, when Han is destroyed, each ship at range one suffers a damage. Now, Han, as an action, can discard the harpoon condition, but then he also has to roll a die and on a hit or a crit take a damage. So, basically, you're, uh, it's, it's kind of like a preview as to what the jam tokens are going to do. It's going to make you start being less efficient with your actions and, and have to... You know, lose that uh, the token stacks, or in Han's case, he's got the old um, Millennium Falcon title, so he's not going to be able to take that evade token. Look at Talon Bane just come in just before that rock. Sweet. I gotta say, Sam's uh, Sam's been piloting like an expert, especially with those sexy Boba Fett templates. <laughs> yeah, have you been noticing he flips them over so the painted side? Is he must use the painted side. And thank you very much, Sam, for helping it. The uh, the painted Boba Fett templates are a little bit of a fun thing today. We've got. Um, almost the entire uh, Canadian crew that took the trip down to Mandalore System Open Series playing today. And uh, as a little bit of a fun thing, we wanted to bring the, uh, the loot and let uh, anybody who ended up on our stream table use the, uh, the, very, the only pair in Canada, isn't it? Really? Until FFG and uh, Cascade Games can actually come up with a solution and, mm -hmm. and bring one of the Open Series to Canada, which we do hope happens at some point. We'd, uh, we'd love that to happen. Um, we'll, uh, we'll have to settle for what we got here. Okay, so it looks like we've got a 4 straight coming from Victor Hell. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, they, they have 4 and 5Ks, of four course, and yes. Five Ks, yeah. I always forget that. Now, as you'll notice here, we've got Talon Bane Cobra, who actually did a barrel roll back, so it's to stay at range 3, which is a good move, because if that harpoon that's stuck in Han triggers, uh, he doesn't want all his backsides taking damage from the harpoon explosion this turn so we got Victor yeah okay so Victor still has a harpoon missile which he won't be launching this round because he has no target lock look at the look at the flexibility of Victor Hell though on the last turn he gets to recharge mm -hmm. and then he doesn't have to take the bloody ion token he can still K-turn behind his, his enemies it's such a, a value for a total of net two points after the title eh indeed Poe taking the Talon roll, trying to get back in the fight here. Not certain if that was going to leave him out of arc of, of Justero, but I think it probably will at this point. So, Iceman, these guys are honorary members of the PTL. They're, 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 uh, they're Ontario guys. They're part of the crew. They also play in the Grand, the Grand River X-Wing League out in Western Ontario right. as well. Yeah, right, right. we got about four or five of those members okay. in town today. Indeed. So here Poe can boost with Prime Thrusters. If Scott chooses to do so, he may be worried about boosting into range of a harpoon explosion. On the other hand, if he stays where he is, he doesn't get a token. Yeah, it's right. It's interesting. Poe opted for the prime thrusters instead of the pattern analyzer. Yeah. Scott just furiously throwing away his son's stress token there. Like, I can do it myself. <laughs> some salt in the Ross household, I guess. Scott does not want to give Sam the high ground in this match by any means. No, <laughs> any I think Sam has the high ground here so far. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, net net first turn uh, combat is done. We've got net no damage on Sam's list. So Han is not clearing his stress. Oh no, something's going on with his dial. He's showing his son. Yeah, it's a bank three. So he's just getting, trying to get out of range. Will he clear just uh, Victor there? I think he will. Oh, interesting. So, no. Oh. I was just thinking the same thing, Aaron. Are we sure that that's the a new Millennium Fidel Tonga and not the old one? Help those guys. Can you see my okay? Oh, wow. <laughs> Sam is skeptical, but it seems to fit. Looks like Sam's going to give his dad that one. Mm -hmm. well, I think it did fit. Um, but the thing is, that means that Han has not cleared stress. Yep, Han uh, is going to retain his stress. His, his two crew are R2-D2 and Chewbacca. Yep. He's gone for the tanky Han build in this one, not the uh, the flipping all over the place Han mm -hmm. build on this one. i got to say, Aaron, this is a bit of a dream. Like I'm a new father myself, my beautiful baby girl mm -hmm. at home. One day, you know, many years from now, playing mm -hmm. a uh, game of X-Wing with your kid on stream. What do, you, what do you give her, six years before you, you, you start prepping her? I honestly think it'll never happen. Okay. I think she'd probably be more interested in Barbie dolls and all that fun stuff, which is fine. Yeah. Want her to be her own person, but uh, no. Nah. Oh, my goodness. Sam, Victor, just a sledgehammer. Victor. Ooh, Ooh. wearing them all. Yeah. Sam showing his father no mercy whatsoever. None. Fully ready, fully ready to just cut off three limbs and, and leave him on the One side of a volcano. The but none of those were crits, right? No. That's fine. We got uh, Victor up in there. So help me out here, Aaron. We're, or, sorry, uh, just arrow. That was it. Okay, so that was that was Victor Hell that just shot, right? Of course, because he's Talon PS9. Bane looks like he has range. Are we looking when we have range? Yeah. All right. We got a range three unobstructed and a range three obstructed on Poe. I'd wager that's range two on Poe. You'd wager, eh? I'd wager. Who's he shooting? Yeah, range two to Poe through the rock. Okay. Yeah, and it's BB-8 Poe, so yeah, shoot Poe, shoot Poe. 100%, because even um, oh. Oh. expertise, uh, Talon Main Cobra paying dividends at this point. Putting two through on Poe. There goes his shields. That's the end of his shields. Which is great, because Justero's not going to get a follow-up shot, but Talon Bane can lay into Poe regardless of which direction he goes in next turn. Mm -hmm. And Han's a little bit out of the fight here. So I think Sam has set himself up for a great late game where one or two of his Kyrex fighters might end up chasing Han mm -hmm. in a late game here, Aaron. And now Scott gets to reply. Let's see what sort of... Yeah, I'd be shooting at Victor as well. I mean, it's it sucks because now Han's going to be double stressed afterwards. Well, the stealth device broke, didn't it? With the last it shot. It did break. You're right. Yes. So there won't be any stress from this. Quite right. Quite right. And he can, if he's lucky, he can take uh, Victor out this round. Okay, so we've got two results. Two hits. Scott's going to use the Han ability and Han. go for big, go for broke here. And it's and worth it. Paid Three. off. So he's going to push at least one damage through on Hell. Hell taking two, one permanent shield damage, one possibly. See, here's a tough spot. I mean, Victor can pulse ray shield ion discharger again mm -hmm. and give himself the option for the green the following turn. But then his ion discharger is broke because yep. Han will just take that ion token and say, I'm yep. tired of your shenanigans. Oh, Poe's got arc thing. on Victor, so this could be the end for Victor. I mean, Poe has to roll three natties here, which is unlikely, and Victor has to blank out. So it's probably not the end for Victor. It is a hit crit, though. Ooh. And oh, one of eight. One so of going to go through on Victor. We're going to find out what that crit is in just one quick second here, Aaron. We're going to put them down there. Thank you, players. And we've got a blinded pilot. I think that's stunned. Oop, it was fast. I'll go check. Oh, that was unquestionably a blinded pilot, my friend. Oh, yeah? Okay. Shaken pilot. I'm so, so okay. much I know. <laughs> <laughs> so just well, to... as casters, we're just guys with opinions. That's right? it, right? <laughs> There you go. Thank you so much, VWTV Live, for your absolutely top-notch uh, camera camera skills and mics on the table. Make sure that Tim looks like as much of an idiot as possible. Oh, me too. I was sure it was done. <laughs> okay, so looks like one damage, one more damage on Han from uh, uh, Kirax number three, which is just Stero. So Han is on five hull. Was one of the one of those results was not a crit, was it? No, it was just no, two hits. There hasn't been a crit yet. Very close. We'd love to see that harpoon tradition. Hit. So now Han, R2, yeah. R2-D2. So he gets a shield back, and he rolls here. 
And no black, crit, so which is no great. Crit flip over. He gets the shield. Okay, good. Thanks All very right, much Dad. for that, Scott. You're playing legally now, Dad. Yeah, that's good. Now, interestingly enough, Sam here looked like he's going to opt not to use his Pulse Ray Shield and Ion Discharge on Justero. Sorry, on Victor Hell, I should say. Mm -hmm. Number two, right on the top one there. Um, not the worst idea, of course, because it, I, I'm sure that maybe Sam has this thing going in his head. He's a very smart lad, Sam. Mm -hmm. it, um, he's having this going. Just to clarify for the newer players, when you're ionized, you are not revealing a straight maneuver. You're actually being assigned a straight maneuver. Correct. So if you wanted to pulse ray shield and be ionized and do... Pulse oh, yeah, ray shield gonna, is yeah. being used. And so, yeah, because he's ionized now, stun pilot and the ionization okay. don't uh, so apply. Ion dischargers... Scott has the option to take one of those. Uh, he's just debating on it now. He's going to opt maybe to take that ion token and break uh, his discharger. Mm -hmm. I think he's passing. Okay. Yeah. I think so. he doesn't want to risk taking an ion token the following turn because if he gets ionized twice, he might end up on a rock or pointing towards a board edge, which is bad news bears for, uh, be. for a 59-point yeah. Falcon. So we know that Justero can't do a straight. And for greens, the Kira, sorry, not just Darrow, Victor. Uh, for greens, what's he got? Two banks. Two banks? Yeah, he's got two banks. He's got two of his greens are straight, unfortunately. Mm. Um, but it doesn't mean that he's completely out of options because he still has, like I said, those two banks. Um, and the one banks are also green as well. So, so his only possible moves where he doesn't block the bump on are to the left. Uh, that are also green. Yeah, I mean, like a one bank to the right's not a, war, a really bad move because you're going to keep your arc on Han. You're going to be tokenless, but at least your your stress is clear to that point. Yeah, well, he won't have arc on Han, but he may have arc on Poe. Yeah, which is ideal. I mean, he's just put Justero in a magic spot right now. That's beautiful. Uh, you're blocking Poe's greens, almost all of them. Do you, do you think it's bad, Tim, that I'm, I'm really rooting for Sam Hard here in an obvious way? No, not at all. Yeah. I mean, we all want Luke so, to beat Darth, yeah, right? Yeah, right. We all wanted uh, Obi Wan to beat Anakin. Sure, but then then that latter one, then Scott's Obi Wan. I know that's, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I don't know. What would you classify this matchup as in terms of like like uh, realism to this to story? They are father and son, so there's the Luke Darth thing there, but they're also student and teacher. So it's like it's interesting to see. I like the Obi Annie thing because it's such an epic. It's probably the best lightsaber battle still. Out of the six, seven movies that have been out so far. Oh, the one that uh, the end of Revenge of the Sith, though. Like yeah. Mustafar, yeah, the Mustafar, uh, the Mustafar what showdown. Is the best music. Yeah, I mean, if it wouldn't screw up the stream, I would put on Duel of the Fates right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, looks like we're just deciding on which uh, Hell's going to do. I'm guessing a green bump and take. A... Yep. Yeah, he bumped. It's the right call there. Get a little, tiny little micron of uh, arc rotation and get yourself uh, back in the position. I really think Sam has closed the net around uh, one or both of uh, Scott's pieces in this turn. He's going to get his choice of who he wants to lay into here. If Justero blocks Poe, the bad news is that um, Talonbane will not get a shot, and Poe might actually get a shot on Talonbane. So... I mean, uh, Talonbane really couldn't do anything else besides that one bank he was going to do there, other than maybe, like, uh, a, a go to the left of the rock and try and barrel. But then you're exposing yourself to Han, so I don't know why you do that. Oh, this is interesting. A hard one for Han. He's still not clearing his stress. And I think Han might be safe out of Justero's arc there. We're going to find out in a quick second. Now, we've got to keep in mind that Han still has Chewie to pop, so he can use Chewie at any point. It's true. Things get really rough. So if you had a really bad crit, just to clarify everybody, Chewbacca crew, it's a four-point rebel-only crew. It says when you receive a damage card, you may discard the Chewbacca crew card to discard the damage card and recover one shield. So it's a basically like net three extra hit points. It is. And here, Scott is attempting to barrel roll with his Poe to dodge the block that... Justero had set up on him. And it looks like he does. That Prime Thruster BB-8 combo paying dividends at this point. If that one bank clears, Poe is going to get an unmodified shot. Oh, nope, he's going straight. 
he's got intensity. That's right. So he could come out of this with two tokens. So Scott's probably called intensity at this point. Doing the one straight, clear the token. Going to take a shot from uh, Talonbane, but he might be in a position to just finish off Victor Hell here. Talonbane might not have arc. Just to clarify with our viewers, too, Hell did opt to take his pulse ray shield on the following turn. So um, it's just Scott opted not to take the ion token with, uh, with Han. That was what happened. Right. So, yeah, we've got um, Victor Hell at one shield and two hull points. So a four-die shot from Poe theoretically could finish him off if, uh, if Victor Hell blanks out. But um, looks like he's going to have Victor shoot Poe rather than shooting Han. I don't, I don't, I don't dislike it. I don't dislike the choice either. I mean, there's a good chance that Victor's going to die here. Sam wants to do some damage. Sure. A hit and two grits. Now is that on Poe or is that on Han? Why is uh, why is Scott going first? I thought uh, it's, I thought Sam had initiative. You're right. All right, Aaron, you're just going to go ask that question. Maybe we missed something. No problem. Victor Hell done there. Oh, a direct hit. Thank you, folks. We're just getting a little bit of a backtrack there. We got a one of the great things about GNKs on Sundays. We get players of all sorts of uh, places from all over Ontario. And, uh, you know, for everybody to come into the 401 on, uh, on a weekend like this and get everybody from the different gaming communities around Ontario together is great. But, uh, you know, everybody gets a little nervous on stream oh. sometime. And Victor, unfortunately, whiffed. And Victor whiffed and died anyway. Yeah. All good. The universe wanted him to die. I guess It's so. okay. At least we did it the right way. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so moving on. Talonbane Cobra looks like he's got just a fraction out of arc. Um, for Poe there. Um, it wouldn't have mattered. I mean, as long as there's simultaneous fire from the two PS9s, it really wouldn't matter in what order. It's pretty uh, apparent that Victor Hell was going to die well, there. Well, it might have, but given that uh, Victor just whiffed, it, it made no difference. You mean Sam? Yeah, I mean the... the oh, Victor Hell. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, we also have a producer named Victor. It's so yeah. confusing. <laughs> Okay, so Han's still... Yes, the given guy was Simul Fire. They yeah. didn't play it out in the right order, but it didn't matter. So the order it turned out didn't matter, so we didn't get them to replay it. Well, at this point, with Victor held down, Scott does have the high ground. I mean, uh, it's a very, very close game on points at this point. Scott only winning by four points at this point. Um, and especially if uh, if Sam can get Poe with Talon Bane, oh. I, th I think Talon Bane can hold it. Because... No. No arc for Justero. That's a rough spot. That is a little bit of uh, an example of the experience, I think, that Scott has in terms of number of games played over Sam. Just being able to extrapolate those positions mm -hmm. and the arcs, what they're going to be after maneuvers in his head. Um, it's the same thing when I used to play my dad, and he used to be able to see four or five turns ahead with his buddy Knights hopping all over my pawns like he was playing musical chairs until that thing finally landed on my queen. And I'd flip the table and go, forget this game. It's four in the morning, Dad. You win. <laughs> And then you'd play him anyway. The next game. you play him anyway. Uh, so it looks like number one, or sorry, Justero. Uh, Justero taking his pulse ray shield there, discharging it with ion dischargers to Poe. I'm so happy that these have actually got on camera because I've been thinking about the ion dischargers in this combo since Guns of Hire came out, or the idea of putting a, um, an ion discharger and an EMP device on like a Shadowport Hunter. Mm -hmm. And then there's just that one turn where you you ionize everybody around you except yourself. <laughs> well, well, this this cra triple crack list is pure rock and roll, man. It is, is rock and roll. These ion dischargers. Okay, R two D two is being used. Yeah, you can't. You've got a shield, man. You can't use it. Okay, he's coming to that conclusion. Yeah, good. Um, we got Iceman HG calling a Talon roll from Poe coming up this turn. Uh, Talon roll to his I'm right. Go Sure. Uh, no, it looks like he's got it. Okay. Um, so, what does Sam do here? How does he regain the high ground? You're right, Talon roll with Poe. I like the one, I just like a... Um, Talon roll boost with Poe. I really just like a two, uh, a two forward from 
Talonbane gives Poe the option to dodge him, though. Poe's so unpredictable with that BB-8 intensity. He can barrel roll to his right where Justero's not going to be mm -hmm. and just do a one forward, and then you're behind uh, Talonbane. I don't, I don't, I don't dislike just a one bank from Talonbane. You know, if, if Talonbane can keep behind Poe, he's going to be able to lay into him, and Talonbane will eventually whittle Poe down um, with expertise. You know, he's got that. Uh, and the other, on the other hand, you know, Han solos the point bank in this match. He's already got half health on. Um, he's already got the half health on Han at 29 points. If he goes in for the additional. Um, if he goes in for the additional 30 points on Han, it might be... Because then Poe's worth 39, so yeah, no, he's got to take out Poe. If Poe's worth 39, which is more than either one of your two ships remaining, you gotta get you got to get rid of that. Yeah, Sam needs two ships still on the table versus Poe in order to win or kill everything and have one ship remaining. So they're going to be playing a little bit of cat and mouse for the next turn or two, I reckon, Aaron. Shall we take a moment to... Um, tell our viewers a little bit about the field and what they can expect in the next couple of videos in this series. Eventually these videos are going to end up on YouTube right. uh, from VWTV Live and this little G&K Sunday event that we've put on here isn't exactly a nice little casual fun Sunday thing. So we've got some of the lists that we have in the pool uh, up in front of us folks so keep tuning in because we're going to get a chance to, uh, to see some of this magnificent um, Stuff and we're not talking about classic uh, prototype Toronto League jank either. What we're talking about this Sunday are great players being great lists. Ooh, hold on here, we've got a bank two from Talon Bay. So that's a bit aggressive. I would have done the one, but you know what? Maybe he thinks that Poe's going for that Talon roll and he wants to block him. I don't know. Is he gonna barrel roll with Talon Bay? <laughs> See, any, any BB 8 move now for Poe gives him no shot, mm -hmm. right? I mean, at this point, if he stays where he is and Poe has a green, he, Poe can just choose to barrel roll into a bump. Uh, he's going to barrel roll out of town. That's a rough decision, especially if uh, especially if Scott program in that one forward from Poe. He can just BB-8, uh, get right up there and just punch uh, Talonvane right in the teeth. Indeed. Okay. What do we got from Poe? Here we have... Oh, he went for the Talon roll. Is it blocked? It, it is, is blocked. Oh, no, no. no it, it can fit. The Talon roll will fit. Oh, that's true. Yeah, the Talon roll can get right up there. Wow. that's uh, That was an excellent try by mm -hmm. uh, Sam to try and block that Talon call. roll there. Thought he would actually be able to cover that base, but that Poe is just going to squeeze. That Talon roll is such a great maneuver. The ability to reposition at the end of that three-turn template is huge. Yeah. And the fact that the uh, the fact that the tie silencer is going to have that on its dial coming up is going to be amazing as well. So prime thrusters, uh, Poe is going to opt to my guess is boost and take a token with intensity. Get ra range one of just arrow and he's going for the bank boost because he thinks it's going to move him because as we know a bank boost moves you further down the board. I think he's given him himself no arc though. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Well, it's not the worst thing. I mean, it's going to put up a much better pursuit vector uh, to try and track down Justero in the following two turns. Well, unless Justero wants to hit that rock next turn, he's going to have to to do a left one turn. It's true. Yeah, there's no there's nowhere for him to go here. Ooh, looks like Han is going to encounter that rock. Han coming in for it. I think he's just been blocked on that rock. I think so. Well, well that'll make that great news for Sam. Make it a lot more manageable. Now it'd be hilarious if he takes a crit during this process. Nope. So the rock got moved. Sam's got it. He's not gonna let his dad get away with anything. Not letting his dad get away with anything in this no, one. No, dad. no, no, dad, you're on the rock. Dad, you're on the rock. Dad, dad, you're on the rock. <laughs> All right, well, All right, so well there's, what else do we have so we've got Christian with his Rush Hour 3.0 visiting us here today. World we're, famous. World famous. It was, actually. People in Mandalore were even doing about it. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got Michael Reed's in town with uh, Quick Draw Tomax Omega Leader. Sweet. Alan Fung is also here playing triple. Uh, Who's that? It's former Canadian Nationals champion Alan Fung. Never the, heard of him. The hair of himself playing triple imp aces. We've got uh, the Pinkertons in town. One of them brought triple uh, Skurgs, I think, and Don Kay's. 
here. He's playing uh, or our five don four. Yeah. He's playing triple scourge today as well. Tristan Singleton's in town from Western Ontario. You brought Lowrick and two Warden squadron pilots. Yeah, he's telling me about it. Looks really cool. Yeah, it's a. Uh, he, he told me the the list looks great on paper to him, and he's never flown it before. So we'll see. <laughs> Talk about the. Uh, oh, oh no oh, damage on. No Han. damage on Han. Uh, and does Poe have arc? I don't think so. See that 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 rock damage would have been mint because then Han would have had to roll R two D two if he wanted to recharge. Every right. every turn you can make. The ship that has R two D two crew roll that the potential chance that they're going to make them actually have to take that face up damage card. Han can't shoot people; he's on a rock. Yeah, so we'll just make sure that that uh, gets corrected. So Scott trying to Han here, and Scott just full on taking advantage of his son here. For shame, Scott! For shame. <laughs> Scott, you were the chosen one. What happened? <laughs> like, poor Sam's trying to keep up with his dad's misbehaving here. Is this it's not how, easy. Is this, is how, this is how our dads always used to beat us at chess, Probably. right? That we you, were too like, young to Look notice. over there, and all of a sudden your, your castle turns into a yeah. pawn, right? Well, how did dad get into that position? He cheated, but we weren't looking. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm sure these two have enough reps on the tabletop to each other. Um, it's, uh, it's all in good fun. Yeah, no, but we have a lot of really interesting lists here today, folks. Uh, Billy Chandler's playing today as well. He brought uh, the list that Kelvin brought down to the Mandalore. No, no, uh, it's uh, something else. Um, it's not Kelvin's list exactly. The scout has got a way different build. Oh, yeah, look it's at that. He's, he's got, got Cad Bane, loadout, Clusters, and Scavenger Crane. Crane. Yeah, it's yep. nice. Thweek and Fenrau at 98 points, not 97. Mm, oh, that's going to cost him. Thweek is one of those pieces where if you're not going with 98, don't even bother. Mm -hmm. And if you're going with 97, you're great. But, you know, like... It, when you run up against other Thweeks who also have 97 and you roll and you lose, it's so disheartening. You're it's like, I brought a 97. I brought it. It's Thweek and Horrible. Oh my God. <laughs> it's Thweek and Horrible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry about the dad joke. I'm not even. It's all good, man. You want to hear mine? I heard a great one the other day. Do it. Okay, so two knights walk into a dining hall. Mm -hmm. One knight turns to the other knight and says, My word. The craftsmanship on that round table that King Arthur has is wonderful. Who built such a thing? The other knight says, Circumference. Oh, wow. We've got uh, Justero going through the rock with the big 5K. And he takes a damage. Takes a damage, which is a shield, which he can deal with again. Uh, I like the move from Justero. I think it gives him the two bank option the following turn. Um, and it gives him arc. At least the one bank, yeah. It's two turns in a row now that Sam's had no shots with his Kirax fighters. He has to find a way to burn down Han if he wants any chance against Poe in the late game here, Aaron. Absolutely. I mean, if he can trap Poe here, great. But I think barrel rolling, trying to, to, to barrel roll against uh, Poe, given a, a likely position, is not really working for him because Poe can always choose to barrel roll with BB-8 from either side. Maybe not here. I think it was a bit of a poor call there from uh, from Sam taking a target lock unfortunately. I think Sam may have forgotten uh, Scott's ability to use the black one title. Yeah, but he's got the expertise going on. So, um, I mean, The could... other hand is you take the target lock, you make Poe use black one title and sometimes it puts him out of a position. We're only going to see in a minute here. Looks like that's a one well, of some sort. Looks like he has prevented him here from barrel rolling to either side. We're about to see. So Poe is going to go first to get out of Han's way. And he's not hes not used BB-8. So he may still boost here to shed the lock. But Poe is not getting a shot either this turn. Those Boba Fett templates are really nice there, Aaron. They are. So I, I hear the, the winner of today's kit against them. Is that correct? It's very incorrect, actually. <laughs> No, they are for sale, though. They're up on eBay. If anybody wants them, just message uh, message Timbo Slice or uh, look on eBay. They're there. Black one, he sheds the target lock. No, it's not a bad call. Makes him, like I said, now Poe has, what, two turns where he's out of the fight? Yep. And uh, depending on how fast uh, Scott has gone with Han, uh, we're going to see uh, what sort of damage uh, Sam's Kiraxes are going to be able to do. Is Han still stressed? Han is still stressed. And that might put him on the other rock. Is it a hard one? No, I believe it is a bank one, and that is going to be awful close. Rock to rock, baby. Sam has the high ground. Yep. So 
There's a thumbs up gesture. No, it was the right call from Scott. You know, he had to try and uh, clear that stress, and that is a micron if I've ever seen one. Yeah. Yeah. And if he had landed that, that would have been curtains for Talon yeah. Main. Good thing. Oh, I guess he's clean. Our angle, our angle deceiving us once again. Han taking the boost. Looks like he's going to fit in there just fine. It's going to depend on which direction he has to turn the following turn. And that's Fat Han doing Fat Han stuff. Sure is, man. That boost is uh, worth every point. Especially when you're moving a PS9 and you're a fat turret like that. Oh, my goodness. Man, it almost should be illegal or something. Uh, and it looks like the only shot here is going to be Han's shot on Talon Bane, who is tokenless. So here's where the discussion about Talon Bane comes up. I, I, I personally feel now with the Vaxi title that the only loadout for Talon Bane is engine upgrade auto thrusters, right? He's such a vital part of your list, I think that you really have to protect him. I love the pulse ray shield um, ion discharger combo. I just think that at PS9, the fact that you can give him veteran instincts for free and get him to PS11, and now he's an arc dodger, especially if you give him vector thrusters and everything Ooh. like that. It's a rough shot from Han Solo there. Oh, my God. Talamine's oh, wearing all of them. we got a crit coming through. We're going to see what it is in just one second. Uh, Bernardo uh, Jimenez, uh, welcome. Thank you. It, the title that Han is using, as far as we know, is the... Um, it is the new Millennium Falcon title, the Sloop title. So that was a direct hit. Unfortunately, that means Talon Bane is down to only two hots, but it looks like Talon Bane is going to have a range one shot on Poe, and he's going to opt. Nope, no arc. We're already in the end phase. Right. There are no more arcs. No shots. All right, so Talon Bane opting to do his recharge shenanigans, taking his shield back. Talon Bane's at one health, just Sarrows at Four health, uh, so things are not looking great for Anakin at this point. Looks like Obi Wan has the high ground. No, it's rough. That last hit on Talon Bane really just took a full health ship and included on the critical list. Now he's still got a harpoon on Talon Bane, but it doesn't look like Talon Bane is going to get an arc to, to shoot with it. <laughs> yeah, it's really tough. I mean, the thing that um, it, it, it's kind of like oil and water in this in this matchup here because. You've got Poe and Han that both of them don't mind going turns at a time where you're not getting any shots if, if Han can take pot shots at you, yep. right? Poe needs to wait for the right moment, particularly because he can't recharge, right? And Sam's been very thoughtful but very aggressive with his K-Fighters. Yeah, and really I, helped him in the beginning. Uh, it really gave him a nice position, a good start, but unfortunately... Um, there are ways in which he's being outlisted here, and it's really hurting him. Like having to move his nines after, or sorry, before uh, Poe. That's a huge hurt. It's yeah, really killed him. Huge hurt. Um, I mean, he's coming to this match with no bid, as far as yeah. I can tell. So you're uh, you're definitely looking at that. Maybe taking uh, one of the harpoons down to like a, uh, you know, even Victor Hell taking his uh, his harpoon down to a proton rocket. And getting that five die shot off the hop kind of thing wouldn't be the That's worst idea. idea. You put the stealth device up to three agility, so your proton rocket still ends up five dice, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that gives you the point in the bid. Yeah, it's not a terrible idea. Um, but you know what? I mean, the game's not over. We still have just Justero gets that bonus attack. You never know what happens. So we'll uh, we'll hold out. Have you spotted a favorite list that you've seen here yet today? Uh, I do. I'm really hoping we get to get Mike Reverso's triple Star Viper fun. Did he actually street. bring Gurry, Dalen, and Thweek? Uh, yep, he's oh got it. my G. I think he's got like a 96-point build, too, so <laughs> it's a little aggressive in the, in the bid department. Holy but Well, just to recap for anybody who's watching, we're going to have uh, three more videos coming for you today. We have a total of 18 players. On our casual Sunday GNK here in well, Toronto, they they tried they tried to vote for just three rounds, but we wouldn't let them. We're making yeah. them play four rounds for you, audience. We are. It is. I mean, this is a theme of today. Our theme of today is RIP Wave Ten through Twelve. Uh, the nerf through eleven. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, ten through. No, yeah, we're at Wave Twelve. Wave twelve is the next one. Yeah. Twelve and thirteen are together. That's right. Yeah, or the twelve point five whatever. So yeah, ten through nine through eleven. Yeah. Yeah. Nine RIP nine through eleven. Really just F off Jumpmasters. Um, 
a lot of end to a lot of different archetypes that have been dominating the meta for the last probably I would say 18 months. Things like a ghost and a bigs. Um, and not that Kanan and Lorik isn't a bad combo still, but um, you know, it's funny. A fat Han, that's that's wave what three. Yep. And you've been playing long enough that you remember the original Fat Han builds, which was a Han and what a bigs. Uh, C three PO. <laughs> On, on Han in the original one. Yeah, C-3PO, old Falcon title, engine upgrade, gunner, right? Yeah. And then what was the what was the wingman on the usual like Fat Hans? Well, in Paul Heber's classic list, it was three Tala pilots in Z95s. Amazing. Yeah. So you either go for the Talas and Han beats you up. Oh, Han is flipping the is, is removing the harpoon. Rolling the die to see if he takes a damage here. Yeah, it's a fifty percent chance, as I recall. He Eat does it. take a damage, but big deal. Eat it, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was that was a wise call. There's, there's no arcs on him this round, so it's the right time. Take the damage, recharge it with R2 again. Um, Scott has to roll that die at the end of combat, so he might end up taking uh, a face-up damage card if he chooses to recharge here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we got nine tables, 18 players, a stream table using the fancy Boba Fett template. This could be a great day. We're gonna have four great videos awesome coming to uh, PTL. Got some blue milk. Going behind the, the caster's table here today. So cheers to you. If cheers. you guys are a few uh, time zones ahead of us and you're already enjoying your Sunday evening. Now, Travis, am I, am I right in saying that the eyeball says there's 49 viewers? That's great. we got 50 live viewers with us today coming through us through That's Twitch amazing. and YouTube. And we're getting notifications as far as chat, whether or not the chat comments are being posted through YouTube or Twitch. That's great. Uh, oh, cool. So we'll know uh, which one of our loyal friends are joining us. Uh, no shot for Just Arrow. Just out of range. That's rough. Poe's going to have a great shot against Just Arrow this next turn. Yep. Ten now, can Talon down. Bane use the Ion Discharge, Pulse Ray Shield Ion Discharger again? He's right next to Poe. Yes, he can. Anytime, anytime he wants, yeah. As long as there's an enemy ship in range one, he can do it. I'm sorry? I think he may have forgot. I think he may not want to do it because um, he might end up taking a face-up damage card. I don't know. Maybe they just forgot it. It's okay. I think uh, I think Scott has the high ground at this point, so he's... Uh... <laughs> Sam's put up a valiant effort, though. I'm really interested to see how his list is going to do against some of these other archetypes that have shown up today. Uh, Robin, for example, brought in uh, his Rack Vader. Rack would not like three Harpoon missiles. No, he would not. I mean, he would have to blind one of them, so he's still taking two Harpoon Missiles. And if one of those Harpoon Missiles is just Stero, and if there's a bonus attack, you might as well just not blind someone. You're still getting shot at three times. <laughs> Indeed. I mean, the trouble for Sam's list here is getting stuff in Arc and keeping it there. Yeah. So it looks like we've got a few of our players who have already finished their games. Billy and Cam. Cam Murray, of course, bringing his, uh, his ultra-modded... Um, Asajj Ventures that has that Warhammer 40k gun on the top of it. It's like it's six beautiful. inches long. It's There's no it's doubt. It's so which obnoxious. Way that arc is None at all. Cam loves it. He's like maximum disrespect. <laughs> no, it's good. I mean, everybody's a pretty casual attitude this afternoon. Um, I think a lot of the players here probably have won some of the swag out of the G and K to yeah, this point in the season. Has. I mean, I haven't because I haven't been around. But <laughs> oh, you just won stuff like Boba Fett templates. It's the thing. I don't win lots of little things. I'll, I'll trade you my OGP pilot for those Boba Fett How about uh, that? How about no, you crazy Dutch bastard? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... You know, it's funny. I tell everybody about this, Aaron. Um, so when I first started playing competitively mm -hmm. for my birthday that year, my wife got me a pair of um, blue, metallically reflective, just no logo... Really nice templates from I remember. Yeah. Uh, Applied Perspective before the before the plant burned down or the warehouse burned down. Really? Didn't hear about that. Yeah, they're shipping again, but there was a while where their, uh, their supply lying out really bit. And I've won a few sets of templates since my wife got me those using the ones that she gave me. So it's not like I don't like the templates that I get. It's, it's that I, I could never do that. I could never go back to my wife and be like, hey, babe, you know those templates that you got me for my birthday? I sold them. Can't do it, man. Anyway, these templates are winning you events, so clearly you have to continue using them. They're good luck. Yeah. It's the same superstitious players are all of us. The same reason people use the dice app. 
It's not because they believe it rolls better. It's just because they're superstitious about it. So. Yeah. And it cheats. Well, if you've hacked it, yeah. yeah. You know, Kelvin was explaining us to in the car on the way down to Mandalore the sheer amount of time that you would have to invest to ha hack the Dice app. Usually people say, oh, it's a Dice app. It could be hacked. Well, just to be real here for a second, people, the sheer amount of time it would take you to go through the lines of code and hack that app so that the probability favors you because you'd have to actually define specific parameters for mm -hmm. the logic outcomes of the dice rolling. Yeah. And it, it would, would take you so much time, you might as well just use that time to practice and get good at the game. You could probably make a phony dice app. Looks like the right one. A phony dice app that looks like it? Is it like those people that make those calculator apps for iPhone that actually is a way to hide your porn on your phone? Is that it? You actually just type your you type your pin into the calculator and it actually opens the real app. I've never heard that before. <laughs> awesome. Alright, so we got BB eight activating. Yeah, we got BB eight acting on Poe. I mean, that's it's been the, the linchpin for Scott in this match really is that, that you know his he's got that one point bid. It gave him the ability to let uh, Sam's PS9s go first and reposition afterwards. I mean, with the with the prevalence of Thweek in the meta right now, Poe has to be very conscious. The po the Poe player, I should say, has to be extremely conscious about what bid he's coming to a tournament with. Because if you come with a 99 point bid, a Thweek is just going to shadow you and say, "Fine, you move first mm -hmm. every single time." Right? Fens out there around PS9s, and he's really conscious of Thweek, so he, the, the Fen players are coming with more aggressive builds. Yeah. You know, if you're running a PS9, uh, I'm just going to ask former Canadian national champion uh, Alan Fung here his opinion on it. Alan, if you go into a tournament these days with a PS9, what's the bid you got to roll with? I mean, obviously you don't know what the new meta is going to be like, but for the last, say, uh, six or eight months. Uh, if you're flying aces... Anybody at PS9 who's got that need to know, like, if you're a PS9 and you re really love it for your opponent to go first, so things like quick draws, fens, pose, that kind of stuff. At least one for sure. I think if your pose intensity gives you a bit of durability that you can almost, like, fly in as a tank. Like, well, this is BB-8. Still, but he has, like, intensity. So he has, like, the... BB-8 intensity, intensity prime thrusters. He's yeah. very synergetic, yeah. And he has a black one title. Um, Which he's used about twice in oh, this game. Oh, we're seeing so. R2-D2 used in the end phase. Oh, face-up card. Face-up card. So he's good. Because I think Duncan had one two points. Yeah, he had two points. Howard was rolling with two points. Oh, no. Does it not occur on a crit? I guess it doesn't occur on a crit. Must not occur on a crit. I thought it occurred on a uh, crit as well. Oh, my bad. So we've got Scott here just disengaging. He's got the game on points on time. I'm going to go tell them how much time remains. Sure. we got about 12 minutes left for uh, our views at home. Uh, hard for the stream table to actually know what's going on, but um, no problem there with, uh, with understanding when the clock runs out on our end. Majority of the tables uh, have finished up at this point. Looks like Mike Reverso's got one of his three Star Vipers down. So excited to see if we actually end up getting... Uh, um, we could get Dalen Oberos on stream today. I think he gave him stay on target, didn't he? Um, I'm not sure. I think it's Predator, actually. Oh, really? Oh. It's a new build. Dude, Mike was explaining to me that he's got a new build for it. Well, Mike Reverso, of course, for all the friends who are watching, um, Reverso's the one who pioneered... The, uh, the Triple T70 loadout that's been very popular in Toronto. And you're going to love this story too, Aaron. I was in Mandalore and I was having a conversation with Mr. Heaver. And I was like, can you sign my, can you sign a, a stay on target for us? I'm going to bring it back to the league, make it a prize for some of the, for the prize pool for the PTL. Yeah. And he was like, oh, stay on target. That's cute. Nobody ever uses it. And I'm like, what are you talking about, man? There's like two or three builds back in Toronto where people use Stay on Target a lot. Yeah, Mike. The Key and Farlander one, Mike uses it. And I told him about Nyan Yum Stay on Target BB-8, and Paul's eyes lit up. He was like, oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> you do the three straight with Nyan Yum, then you BB-8, then you stay on target to a Talon roll, pattern analyzer for another move, and clear all the stress because it's Nyan Yum. 
Nian Nam can go basically anywhere he wants at PS7. Which is not bad. I mean, that's there's a great. lot of stuff in the game that's below PS7. And of course, because he's Nian Nam, if he ends up against Asajj, he can just get within range one and arc of her and go, nah, I'm not taking any stress. No, you put like a you put like a fat turret that has Cassian and or crew on it and pair that with a Nian Yum, he becomes the world's best blocker. Or right. And now you don't even need to worry about pilot skill because you know where they're going to go, right? It's pretty exciting. Okay, so Sam is trying to come back around here and get some target. Weissman HG, you're absolutely right. It was the uh, the Canadian Nationals final this year. It was uh, the American Nate Moore versus uh, Bohan Lee out of uh, London, Ontario in the grand final. Um, Nate had been using the, uh, the app for quite some time. I actually played against him, I think it was in January this year. Um, in the Wixom regionals, and he was using the dice app there. He's just a superstitious guy. He preferred it, and truth and truthfully, he got more flack from his friends and team than we gave him about it. Um, I agree that it's hard to follow along. We had our judge there that day, kind of putting dice results up in the app tray, so we could try and follow along. It does make it hard to uh, follow along with what's going on in the game, but uh, ultimately, the stream table is. Not for just the viewers, especially at a premier event like that. The players playing have the right to use all the uh, legal FFG equipment or tokens or whatever. And I know that we at the PTL and, and most Canadian um, uh, tournament organizers who I've ever been uh, just have that in mind. Is that, you know what, it's a game, it's for fun, you can use whatever you want. I mean, if you're, if you're going to show up to a tournament with like Imperial Raiders as your shield tokens, then you know you're a, you're a bit of a dick, but that's fine. You're some category, <laughs> some kind of person. All right, so we may have shots here between Justero and Poe. Let's see. So yeah, R two D two crew is confirmed. It's only a hit. Rudolph. Right. Sorry, I pulled it up. At the end phase, if you have no shields, you may roll a die and uh, and do the the card thing. So we've got some unmodified shots through Rock here. Poe onto Justero, and he rolls three hits. And Justero rolls two hits. So it's not bad. Not Only bad at all. For the guy. I'm really impressed with Sam. He's managed to get his Kiraxes out of danger, repositioned, and ready for another assault. I mean, Poe, if he goes left of that Rock next turn, he's going to have no shot. And if he goes right of that rock, which he probably won't, he's going to take two shots. So he could go left of the rock using BB-8. He could go as far back as he can, as he can go, and then uh, do a bank to the left. But I still think it hit the rock. Um, I mean, it might be our angle. I'm not too sure, but he can definitely BB-8 to the right, um, and then bank one back into the left. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Post stressed right now because he did the talon. But with prime thrusters, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. He has to have three tokens, three stress tokens before yeah. prime thrusters doesn't work anymore. Yeah. yeah. So in all likelihood here, uh, Justero has to prepare for a face-to-face -face Joe's with Poe and drag Talon Bane into that particular formation as well. That's rough too because Justero can't recharge before he goes into the final fight next turn, right? Han's going to come about probably two-turn boost. I mean, if if, uh, if Scott does a two-turn boost and goes this way with Poe, yep. he's probably going to have two shots on Talon Bane and finish the game off against Justero. But yep. I don't think that Sam has the guns to burn down Han next turn. But if, if he can find a way to get two shots on uh, Poe, maybe like a 5K and a three bank here. Yeah, you're right. A 5K would be a good plan. But he's, he's just going for the straight joust. He's going to go for the straight joust. I mean, if Justero... If Poe's um, BB-8 right and then Bank 1 is blocked, uh, then he'll only have one token and Talon Bane will be shooting him. Unfortunately, oh no, he's barrel rolling. I don't know, I don't dislike the barrel roll because now Poe's BB-8, he's going to have to boost to get out of just Arrow's arc. Might put Poe right into Talon Bane's clutches. It's a good piece of positioning. Unfortunately, it leaves Justero with no tokens to deal with Han. Well, the most frustrating thing here is that Sam has eight points of harpoon missiles. Sorry, four points because he spent one. He's got four points of harpoon missile that he just can't use. Yeah. 
right? Poe just laughs maniacally at your target locks yeah. and shreds them off a Han, too, which is even worse. Yeah. So Talon Dane just focuses, because in all likelihood, a target lock would just be shredded here. Both father and son showing up to this GNK just with great lists in their A game here today. Indeed. That looks like a two to me. Sam's been flying beautifully. He just really is outlisted hard here. No, I couldn't agree more. I really am very, uh, very impressed with the way that he was able to make that gamble call with Justero and say, you know what, I gotta take my lick here, go over this rock, and take two or three turns to get Justero back in a fight, or I'm just gonna lose him. Yeah, so. I think I think it was actually a good call. I mean, uh, Han does not have uh, any rerolls apart from his Han reroll, so with a little bit of luck, Justero will get out of this with only one damage on him. Thank you again to all of our viewers who are tuning in live for our stream today. Please feel free to uh, capture the link and share it. Uh, let people know that we're going to be online now for probably the next uh, five hours or so, streaming another three matches after this. And we're uh, check us out. Yeah, tune in and we'll uh, we'll have some good stuff for you. So yeah, as is expected, Poe having to um, opt to. Let's see if he remembers to use intensity. I'm sure he will. Uh, his son may be generous and, and let him uh, get both tokens despite the incorrect timing. Yeah. Let's see. So there's an evade token. I'm sure he announced it to his son there. Oh, it's possible he did announce it verbally. Yeah, you're right. I mean, when you're watching something on stream, you got to remember that sometimes people say things, um, and that is adequate to get your action within the phase. Um, Interesting choice here that uh, Scott opted to take the evade token and not the Poe focus token. I mean, it definitely keeps Poe alive. He's about to take five dice from it, Talonane, isn't it? It actually doesn't make any sense. He should have... So he should have got the evade from the barrel roll, right, with intensity. Yeah. And then he gets his focus action as per normal. Well, he, he boosted as his action. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. So he's done, I think he's taken the evade to keep, keep himself alive. It guarantees he keeps himself alive. So what token is Han taking there? I can't tell what that is. Uh, Han did a one bank, and it looks like he... I don't know. Did he take a target lock? Okay, so Talon Bane is first. Yes, awesome. Oh, Five that's dice. rough. Oh, that's rough. Still three, so he can't kill Poe with this. Not when Poe rolls oh. like that. Sam, you were the chosen one. There's a fair amount of dad gets lucky dice going on here, isn't there? Look at this. Sam, you were, meant, you were meant to bring balance to the force, <laughs> not leave it in darkness. And four dice from Bo, two. Talonbane can dodge that, dodge that Talonbane, he does. My goodness, nice. just lightsabers aggressively bouncing off each other, doing no damage here. Amazing. And now Han on. Justero, that looks like range two. Yep, come on, Justero, you just gotta dodge this. And range two. And we've got... Oh. Ooh, is he going to haunt that ball? I don't think he's going to haunt a re-roll Does he have a focus token there? Do we just, yeah, no, he okay, does have so a focus token. Okay. Okay. okay, so he just needs to roll... Yes, one, one? to take two. Just Sarah gets one more... Uh, one more light. One more... Uh, yep. Looks like Poe's at range one. One more round. The pulse uh, ray ion shenanigans. That's true. Tell that they yeah, for sure. Looks like we'll have one more round after this. Justero rolling two hard hits. Han not having C-3PO to rely on, taking both of them. Another permanent hull damage. Interesting to, uh, to see here whether or not Scott actually opts to use uh, R2-D2 here. Iceman HG, I couldn't agree with you more. That was a rough turn for Talon Bane to blank two out of five. All he needed was paint, and he could have really punched Poe in the face there. He could have straight up killed him there with like a lucky crit or something. Poe, of course, rolling double natty evades doesn't hurt. <laughs> no, dad rolling perfect dice. It's just kind of... Oh, well. When we first left each other, I was but the student. Now I am the master. So we've got one more turn. Uh, Sam going to have to decide here how to try and do this. 
I don't foresee uh, K turns to try and take pot shots on Poe. Um, that was a really great piece of positioning by Sam. I don't see how he's going to get something as good out of this this round. It's just rough. No, I mean, I, without being able to actually see what the angle looks like about whether or not a four forward would actually get him past that rock, he could do the one bank to his right and then barrel roll behind the rock. But if he does the one bank and doesn't hit the rock, he could just take a token there and take a shot. There is a mathematical possibility that he could actually take out Han here. Yeah. Han would have to miss, not kill Justero. Um, okay, so Sam has opted to keep Justero alive by uh, going for a block on Han. It's not a bad move. Oop, nudge the ship there, nudge the ship. Did they notice? No, they didn't notice. Um, it wasn't a big nudge. No, it was a little nudge. <laughs> oh, well. The last turn here, it looks like uh, Scott probably going to take this game on points. Oh, we're going to see how uh, Sam does this. I mean, if uh, Scott did a one hard turn in with Han here, it might not matter where Justero is. If he went for the, the three bank here, it might also not matter. We're going to see what uh, Scott programmed in for his Han here. And then we'll see what happens. Two straight for Talonbang. Just throw some more damage to Han. Oh, he's still got the harpoon. Oh. Looks like he thought that three bank was going to make it over the rock. Unfortunately not. A roll. Oh, Talon Bane taking the shield damage. Right. It's a rough go. Yeah, and Scott programmed in the Talon roll to try and get behind him. Looks like he's going to be able to finish off Talon Bane in this turn. Possibly both of them if he's if he doesn't uh, land, doesn't bump into Justero with Han. Well, final round, Dad Hunter O. That's rough. It is. Oh, well, you know what? I'm very happy we got this on stream today. Um, it just goes back to what you and I were saying about playing uh, games with your father when you were young. Mm -hmm. The oh, day you got the, the block. The day that you finally beat your dad. I mean, obviously, Sam's beaten Scott many times. Scott has told me this. Yes. But when you finally play a game against your father, mm -hmm. and he gives you his best effort, and you still beat him, there's nothing more exciting, because you really feel like um, that moment when, you know, Obi-Wan and, and, uh, and Anakin and all that fun stuff, right? Yeah. They teach I, I never got that moment. Um, my dad was such a good player at all games, all of them, all the time, even if he was new to them. Uh, one time, just to show off, he played my mom and my grandma and me at Scrabble. Well, sorry, he played my mom and my grandma at Scrabble while he played me at chess at the same time, and he won both games simultaneously. Like a like a boss. That's unbelievable. Okay, well, uh, looks like we've got the final turn of combat coming up here soon. I'd like to thank all our viewers for uh, for chiming in again, and a, and a big special thank you to. Uh, Victor and Travis from VWTV Live for Indeed. helping us stream today. Those guys are the best. Don't go way too far, folks. we got a few more videos coming up after this for the rest of this uh, very not casual GNK that's going on this. Casual, uh, not this, casual. Uh, this casual, not casual, casual GNK. competitive. <laughs> oh, and Poe's just going to quad hit and talent base. Biggity boom. History. Or wait, was that on Justero? No, he shot. Uh, yeah. All right. So that's it. That's, that's the end. There's the game.